Now I'm going to show you a more advanced way in VR post-production to combine um, video and stills. Uh, in this case, we're going to make a collage using um, some uh, 360 material and some traditional or flat um, material, both video and stills. Um, so this, for example, is a, um, is a uh, 360 photo, equi rectangular, um, but this could just as easily be video for our purposes. And um, if I switch it to a VR display, you can see um, we can look in any direction. Uh, now, if I want to um, combine traditional um, standard def or high def uh, flat, so to speak, video, um, I can drop it on top and ta-da, there it is. Um, but you might notice, um, like text or, or logos or anything else that you might have tried, um, there is a curve to this. Um, and if we were to make it bigger, the curve uh, would be even more obvious, more pronounced. Um, the, what's happening here is we're taking flat video and kind of pasting it on the inside of a sphere, that, that spherical video we're making. Um, and this sort of reveals the illusion of the sphere here. Um, the other problem um, with doing this is if you try to uh, move this anywhere from its default space, um, like let's say we wanted it down, <laughs> um, you start to see uh, it'll never end up down underneath our feet. Instead, it just sort of sucks into the void. It kind of goes down the drain. And that's true if you if you tried to send it up towards the sky as well. Um, so what's going on here is that we have a, a geometry problem. We're trying to use flat or planar video in a spherical um, video space. So luckily, there is a tool for this. Um, like we did in the uh, text tutorial, we're going to use VR plane to sphere. Um, and this effect can be put on flat or planar video to uh, get Premiere to kind of treat it geometrically like it's spherical video. All right, so now it looks flat. Excellent. Um, so if you wanted to look just sort of like you had a billboard or a, or a big screen TV floating and you wanted to play that video just kind of like inside your um, spherical video, uh, we're already there, you know, you're done. Um, but um, if you want it to uh, be placed somewhere other than the default zone, um, we're going to use the VR plane to sphere uh, sub effects not the motion ones. So, you know, even though we put VR plane to sphere on it, if we started trying to go down with position, it would still do the same thing. And, um, you know, doing scale would also wreck, <laughs> wreck the geometry. So we're not going to touch these at all. We need to leave these at their default state. And if you've already messed with them, get them back to their default state. Um, we're going to do scale on the um, VR plane to sphere effect because it has its own scale. Um, I'll also point you to the next effect down uh, under VR Plane to Sphere is called Feather. And this will bring in the edges and kind of soften them a little bit. This is great for collage work because it's just, um, it, takes, it takes that hovering TV look away. Um, the downside of the feather on VR Plane to Sphere is it's not particularly extreme. We can't feather much uh, any more than this. This is the maximum setting. Um, and for a collage, I would like to feather a lot more than that. Um, I have a solution, but uh, I'll show you in a moment. Um, but until we get there, I want to point out the other effects we have. Um, rotate projection, which is down at the bottom. This is how you're going to place it um, in space. You know, if we want it uh, to do that thing it couldn't do before, where we put it at our feet instead of going down the drain, you know, you can do that. Um, if you want it, um, you know, placed uh, in a different spot in the in the pan, um, we can do that. Uh, for me, I'm gonna try to do a little bit of both, maybe a little bit of a complex, um, just so I can kind of rough it in where it looks vaguely believable that this, uh, this character could be riding this buffalo across the grassland or something like that. Um, the other uh, directions that we haven't messed with can roll this way or that, and if you combine them, um, it can be it can be a little fussy because they affect one another. So you know, once something's down far, then if you're trying to move it, it kind of moves up in a diagonal or in an arc. So you gotta you gotta plan your moves. 
um, with some care so you get it to, to place where you want it to place. Um, the rotate source, which I um, strategically ignored up until now, is a little more um, stylistically intense because it's going to work in perspective. So you can make things appear to, you know, lay down on the ground or um, turn, you know, in kind of oblique angles. Um, this is good if you're trying to match architecture, you know, you want it to appear that there is a, um, a, a portal that's like lining up along a wall or something like that. And, and the portal is showing an animated video spinning or something like that. You know, you could, you could use, um, the rotate source to accomplish that goal. Um, now, um, if this works for you, then once again, you know, you can bail out here. But uh, I want to go a little further. I'd like to be able to cut into this in a shape that's not a rectangle, and I want more feathering. <laughs> I'd like to lose a little bit of these corners and these top edges and stuff. So if you're familiar at all with um, Premiere masking, you might think, oh, well, okay, I'll create a mask, a shaped mask on one of these effects. But unfortunately, if you put a mask on VR plane to sphere, you're just masking out parts of the tool that's making all this geometry possible. So that's not where we would do it. And if you try it on opacity, the same thing happens because you've, you've tried to apply a kind of flat video effect onto spherical video. Um, so we can fix this, but it takes an extra step. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to separate the flat video effects, do them all first in their own sequence, and then just do VR plane to sphere on this um, final uh, sequence. So the way I'm going to make that happen is I'm going to right click on the, in this case, the buffalo pic, uh, video, the, the flat video, and I'm going to choose nest. I'll give this a name because I'm making a nested sequence that's going to appear um, on my timeline and as its own sequence in my project. Um, if I double click on this now green clip, uh, it is indeed its own sequence. It creates a, um, a tab here in the timeline window. You know, don't freak out. Your, your previous sequence is still there. You can jump back to it. But in this case, we're going to, um, to set this sequence up with new settings, settings that refer to this clip. Um, so it so happens buffalo rider.mp4 is um, 720 by 480 standard def clip. And I found that out by being in list view and scrolling over until I got the video info. Um, so in the Buffalo sequence, I'm going to go up to sequence, sequence settings and change it. It's not going to be my VR settings in 5.7K. It's going to be its own native settings, 720 by 480. I'm also going to jump down here to the VR properties and say none. So this is flat video now. Um, and you might look at it and be like, but wait, it's still all weird. <laughs> and that's because VR plane to sphere is still on it. Um, so we're going to delete that. And now we just have our, um, our flat video, uh, like anything you, you're used to cutting. Um, this is what I will make a, in this case, a elliptical mask on. Uh, I'll just grab the anchors and resize it to kind of get the, the look I want. So then you can use... Um, the feathering on this, on the mask feather, which is much more significant than the one on VR plane to sphere. And in combination with um, mask expansion, which is sort of like a, like a choke, um, you can get the look you want um, for your collaged image. Now, if we jump back to the, uh, the sequence we were working in in VR, um, this is where we will apply VR plane to sphere onto that nested sequence. So now you can make your scale adjustments here um, and do your rotations as necessary here. Um, and you still get the increased feathering and the you know non-rectilinear shape of the um, mask we made inside the nested sequence. Um, but wait, there's more. Uh, we can we can take that a little further. Like for example, here, if I throw um, a still image, in this case, a map uh, on top, um, the same logic applies. You know, I could try VR plane to sphere here, um, 
which will, in this case, kind of shrink it down to size, make it flat um, as I wanted. But uh, again, the feathering is just simply just simply not enough um, for me. I'd also like to make a mask that's not a square or an oval. I want to follow the coastline. Um, so that's a, another effect you can make happen. So we're going to ditch VR plane to sphere. Um, we're going to nest this sequence. I'll call this one map. And in map, uh, we're going to pick up the settings from this um, JPEG. So this is uh, a different um, resolution. This uh, was just an image found online. It happens to be 2400 by 2424. Again, I'm going to remove VR properties. And um, now we have a sequence that can be masked. And this time I'm going to use the free draw pen tool. Um, the way this works, in case you've never used vector drawing um, pen tools like you might use in Adobe Illustrator, if you click once, you make a dot. If you click again, you make a line between the two dots. And you can just make a polygonal, you know, very angular outline around something. Um, so that's one way to do it. But I'm going to control Z back to my original dot. You can also click and hold without releasing, and then you can drag to make curves. Now I gotta say, the first time you use this, you will be confused. It's, uh, it's a little bit unusual of a way of thinking about drawing, um, especially because the vectors that you create on any given anchor uh, affect the next one. So like if you come around a turn very sharply like this, the next turn might have trouble, you know, making, <laughs> making up for it. Um, so you can move anchors once they're set. You can also grab the kind of like vector of <laughs> intensity that you took that curve with and change it. Um, so uh, it's a funny thing. Once you get used to it, it feels kind of natural. But uh, at the beginning of using it, it will be um, it will feel very uh, unfamiliar to you. But um, the whole point of what I'm doing here is I'm just going to try to make a very curvilinear outline. And then ultimately, it has to connect back up to the first anchor point. Um, so this is just to prove that uh, you can indeed do things that aren't ovals as well. Um, the same rules apply. I can feather this in. Um, I can uh, do the, the mask expansion to sort of get the look I want. And then when I go back here, um, I want to show you um, this is where I would throw VR plane to sphere on the map. Um, and then my goal with the map is I'd like it to go uh, up in the sky. And I want it to be kind of big. Um, so I'm going to do scale. And um, just for the fun of it, I'll try rotate source 2 and give it just a little bit of, a, of an angle there. Um, and it'll kind of hug this tree. Um, but I'd also like it to look a little more subtle than this. Um, so I'm going to uh, use another tool that I think is very useful for video collaging, and that's the blend modes under opacity. Um, so here, in this case, because this isn't a geometric problem, I can do this on the VR sequence. I'm just going to go under blend mode, and instead of normal, I'm going to change it um, to uh, divide. And in this case, um, that gives me a look that I quite like, uh, that feels sort of like it's, it, at first you think it's just part of the clouds, and, um, and actually it's a map up there, you know. Um, so maybe this would happen in a documentary or in a fantasy or, you know, some kind of informational thing where you're like, oh, we were on an expedition in another country, here it is, you know. Um, so the reason I'm, I'm thinking this way is um, this gives a uh, filmmaker an option to, um, to populate uh, an otherwise um, unanimated landscape. In this case, it's actually a still photo, and I can animate that photo with um, collage elements that are uh, moving. And um, you know, also, I could throw transitions on the front and back of these so that there are times when the map isn't there, and then it appears. And then, you know, it disappears again um, so that uh, you can get little points of interest around your 360 composition. Um, this way, 
uh, as you're building a 360 film, there are reasons for the viewer to look in different places um, as some of your collage elements or your visual effects appear and disappear, um, guiding, guiding the eye. Um, as a last uh, tip, any of these subsettings of VR plane to sphere can be keyframed. So um, we could potentially take this Buffalo Rider clip and um, make it something that travels um, around the sphere of our video um, little by little to guide a viewer's eye.